I got a feeling that tonight's gonna be a The proper glue is the Smithers Oasis floor lace. Now, the one thing that, that you need to do and starting, we're going we're gonna to try and do something a little bit different than what most people do. When most people do, they glue straight out of the tube. Here's where I differ. I actually take the tube of glue, open it up, and you can use any, you can use any piece as far as uh, something disposable. You want to be able to have something that you can actually put the glue down. By putting the glue down, you do a couple of things. By putting a pool of glue down, you get to use muscle memory. You get to use a, a mechanic that you're used to. You're used to dipping and sticking, dipping and sticking, dipping and sticking. Also, what you'll notice is that as you use the glue and as the glue sits down on the pool, it'll begin to dry. You'll see a film start to form over the top. Obviously, that's the glue drying. That's going to allow you to go a little bit faster. So put the little bit of two, the little bit of glue down. Now, I've got one stem of spray roses here. What I'm going to do with my very first two roses, I'm going to take them off the stem. In the first two placements of roses, I'm going to cut the calyx completely and totally flat off. Holding my bracelet, and I've got the classic bracelet here from Fitz Design. This is the classic champagne. And actually, when the bracelet comes, it comes in a package just like this. This was originally designed for people that wire and tape their corsages. So if you do want to continue to wire and tape your corsage, you can. You wire and tape your corsage, you use these ribbons to be able to tie it on. But I want a glue. So on a classic bracelet, I flip it inside out to get the plastic disc up. Now I'm going to take this, and when I, when I go to glue, kind of come in at the side on the pool to make sure that I'm getting all of that film that's formed, and I'm getting that glue that's dry. Uh, as, I, as I glue my corsage, I do a couple of things. First thing is, I set the placement down, and I physically push the flower down. I physically push the flower down, it allows the glue to squeeze out from underneath it, allows it to dry faster. The other thing that I do is I make sure that I hold the stick. By holding it still, I don't have that drying loose. A lot of people think that by moving it around, it's going to dry faster. Well, you know what? That's true, but it dries loose and more like that. So I physically hold it down. And then I go on. Hold on a second. That's my first two placements. My next two placements. Instead of cutting the calyx completely off, I'm just going to cut the stem completely off. So that I end up with leaving the calyx and I leave the head, and I take the stem all the way out on the next two. And I'm going to take these and I'm going to put them in the blue. And we'll say these first two placements are 12 and 6. These first two placements are north and south. These next two placements are going to go in east and west, they're going to go in at three and nine. And just like when you wire and tape a corsage, your first two roses go up, your next two roses go out slightly. So we have something that looks like this. Last two placements, because I'm going to do a six rows corsage. I'm going to leave the stem about an inch long. And I'm going to leave that on there. The reason I'm going to do that is because just like when you want to take the corsage, your first two roses go up, your next two roses go slightly out. The last two roses you always have laying flat. We're going to do the same thing with this. Now visually you'll see there's a hole up here and what I'm going to call the southwest, a hole up here in the northeast. There's a hole at 1.30 and at 
So I'm going to take these, I'm going to take the stems, and I'm going to kind of leave the stem right underneath. So what I end up with is something that looks like the start of a corsage. This is a traditional form that you're probably used to seeing. Now, some people obviously have a bow in here, but we'll get back to that in a moment. The next step, of course, is we've got our flowers in there. We need to add a little bit of greenery. We need to add a little bit of filler. So I'm going to take a little bit of plumosa. And I'm going to take a little bit of limonia, a little bit of caspia, a little bit of misty blue. I'm not quite sure what you guys call this, but it's got a lot of different regional names. I figured I'll touch on them. So I'm going to take these little pieces, and you know what? I'm going to add a glue. And I'm going to tell you this, glue is cheap, refunds are expensive. The reason why I say glue is cheap and refunds are expensive, well, it used to be that when you had to give somebody a refund, they told seven people about how bad you were. Now, that wonderful person that used to tell seven people, she has 7,000 friends on Twitter, MySpace, and Facebook. She's going to tell all of them. So glue is really cheap now, and refunds are really expensive. So we're going to put a little more glue in. And I'm just going to glue little touches of the greenery and the filler into the design. Now there's a couple of reasons why I teach this design exactly this way. The first reason is, just as I said earlier, most people say you have to have some sort of elaborate setup, and you just don't. You can glue straight onto the pad and it will hold. The other reason I teach this design in this manner is because when I first learned how to design flowers, when I first went, went to design school, we were taught how to do a dozen roses. The first day we were taught how to do a dozen roses, the teacher had us take the roses and had us take and put the leather leaf in first, and you put the leather leaf in, and then you put the salal in, and then you put the, put the roses in, and then you add the filler. And that was the end of the day when we went home. The next day we came in in the morning, and he had us take the whole thing apart. And he taught us how to design with our focal flowers first. And we designed by putting our roses in first. By putting our roses in first, and then putting our filler in, or I'm sorry, and then putting our leather leaf in, and then putting our, our filler in. What we realized is that you actually use a half to a third as much product as what you normally do. Now, there was a study quite a few years ago, and they wanted to find out what the most expensive fresh flower was, or fresh product was in a flower shop. We come to find out, and I think all of the store owners know this as well, it's leather leaf, because everybody uses too much leather leaf, and nobody ever charges for it. So we want to make sure that we design with the focal flowers first, just to make it that much easier. Now I'm not putting a lot in here, and I, I'm, I'm going to finish just like this. I'm not, I'm not really putting a lot, of, a lot of filler and a lot of greenery in here, because it doesn't need it. The roses are what's important. The other thing that's important, of course, is to be able to still see the bracelet. The bracelet has the after event value. The girls will wear the bracelet after the event is done. So just put the little touches in here and being able to make it nice. Now, I'll tell you this. If you put a bow in every one of your corsages, it's okay. It's sponsored by a ribbon company. I'm okay with that. If you put a bow in every one of your corsages, the process changes just slightly. And what you want to do is you want to, first step, make a bow. Second step, attach the bow. And you can attach the bow however you wish. You can attach the bow with glue. You can attach the bow with the wire that you made the bow with. You can attach the bow with ribbons. And you want to go ahead and put that on. And then you can start putting on your flowers. But the point is, you don't have to have a bow there to be able to glue. But we've got just a nice, simple corsage here that we made really, really quick. And I guarantee you, once you get comfortable with gluing, you'll be able to make any corsage in five minutes or less.